put more stuff in, but we can also make it run better, smoother for all the players so they can really enjoy it. We definitely want the environment to have an impact in some of the gameplay and it should make it a pretty dynamic experience. So there's a lot of different ways you can interact with the map. We have a new interaction system where you press a button and you either pick something up or you channel onto it and something happens. So we have jungle buffs from Smite 1, but now instead of walking over to pick them up, you have to press the interact key. The nice thing about this is that new players oftentimes pick up uh, a buff accidentally. You play areas like Gold Fury and Fire Giant, you should definitely be able to recognize where you are if you're coming from Smite 1, but it'll be a lot more impactful now. You'll definitely get a sense you're in a special area of the map. We really want to play with scale, make you feel like you're in a pit with Fire Giant, that if you walk in there, put down your ward and get out or be ready for a fight. Big team boost and power and protections. So we wanted to keep that. So we just reworked his kit to be fresh and exciting for Smite 2. We also like that the Gold Fury has some end game stuff that scales really well as the match progresses. So we want to add a little bit of that for the Fire Giant. So each time he dies, his buff gets stronger as the match progresses and as more Fire Giant kills happen the buff is progressing in the early and mid game. We wanted to add something there so that she's still worth taking in the end game. Now, when you defeat her, she gives you permanent team effects and she has three of them. Once you get all three, the Gold Fury then transforms into the Ancient Fury and this Ancient Fury will then start turning off all the towers and phoenixes when you defeat So when your attack speed was raised or like anything animation changed, we would only have that one mesh to use. In Smite 2, we've taken these new ribbons and we've added a socket to the tip of the sword and to the base of the sword. And we're tracing this ribbon from uh, point A to point B and when the sword's swinging around, now it can swing in any shape and the ribbon's gonna follow it just as if we animated it in real time. As effects artists, one of the things that's really important to us is the player is empowered. We want you to feel like you're playing that god. We want you to feel like you are Chalk in this instance. So making your lightning really cool, giving you awesome sound flashes when appropriate is something that we're trying to do with enemies of your character to look at. So you've got your cool looking targeters and your gods color palette with their Pantheon theme. But if you want to be able to see your targeter better, we're giving you the option. You can make your targeter whatever color you want or can see uh, to try and help people that are colorblind. The comparison to my one is that he felt way more fluid. Everything just kind of moved together. You could cast all the four of his abilities seamlessly. You could drop your tornado, you could ult through it, you could hit your... So, the lanes, the towers, the minions, the titans, and the jungle camps. And then we try to deepen those things the jungle first. buffs in the map. We reworked all of them to be different for Smite 2. And in addition to them all being new, the jungle camps now level up when you kill them. So when they level up, the buffs that they give out are better. And we have a little help people tip in the game. To fight over them. We, we love pe seeing people invade to try and get these jungle buffs. You should be buffs. able to recognize them when you do play with the minions that should be in there. It'll be a new experience without being completely the outside unknown. your base. Right, right now, in Smite 1, when you walk through, they automatically open. But you can't open it from the other side. Now you can open it from the other side. You just press the key to so open. So players will have to go walk over and channel onto it to capture it. Once it's captured, and if you complete the capture, it makes all your minions for the next wave stronger. Like your whole scene, all your characters, all your you know environment. So it's challenging. You have to put in the time, have to put in the work to make it look good. Instead of a god just having one ability and it's just one piece of code and it's relatively huge, abilities are split into a whole bunch of individual components that all have their own functions through the gameplay ability One of system. The problems in a lot of video games is that whenever you're in a team fight and there's so much happening, how do you tell what's going on? So in Smite 2, one of the things we wanted to do is one, three, four were virtually entirely set up by me with no programming assistance. That was very different than what we do in Smite 1 and that those abilities all had significant changes over time because of the ability to prototype, test, and adjust all in the design. very excited to, to let more players into Smite 2. The uh, closed testing with ambassadors and streamers and pros has been really fun, and with employees has been really fun. Um, we hear a lot of positive feedback every test, and then also a long, long, long to-do list. We're trying to remake over 10 years worth of game here, so. Do we do more texture maps now to give better resolution and stuff like that? So higher polygon counts, uh, things of that nature. The biggest thing has been probably cloth simulation and learning the ins and outs. She has simulated cloth physics on her movement. In Smite 1, we had to hand key animate all cloth to 
make it look as much like it was flowing in the wind and stuff like that. But Hecate actually has a big cloth veil and that actually moves and responds to the physics and you know the world around her. There's some clear out of the box gains. Uh, we get to see uh, cloth simulation live in the fly. We can update something in the editor and see it while we're playing in editor, see it update immediately. Yeah, she kind of has a twist on the interact feature. Hecate has two special case interacts just for her that in certain situations she can now interact. So her passive is actually kind of an active in this way. The other one is her ability two. She puts down a magic orb. Every single ability that's activated from an enemy god or ally god powers it up and then she refires it to do damage based on how much fighting was going on in the area. Another one of Hecate's abilities, we're rendering a flow map over everything, which is this. The world of Smite, the gods that you play as, we want the player to feel they have the tools they need to play and the information that they need without weighing them down. Everything that you are seeing right now, it's still on this evolving process and every day it's changing and that's why it's exciting. Movements leave trails, making attacks more visible. Upper and lower body animations are more in sync, positioning your character within the action. Specific animations and effects have been retuned to add more impact than before. CC status and immunity are now clearly communicated on nameplates, so it's easier to read the flow of combat. And work has been done on the UI and user experience to make sure you truly feel when you're hitting your enemies. And the initial projectile is very strength focused, but the bramble feel that appears that feels more magical, that is something that scales up int. So if you want to do more wave clear, you want to go more int focused. If you want to do more single target damage with your bramble blast, that's going to be more strength focused. So that's an example of a character that you can build either way or hopefully hybrid. But if you want to amplify specific so, parts, you want your ult to hit really hard, you actually want to go int focused because it really, really amplifies the damage of the ultimate. Um, it also means that the summer damage, the one that does the extra on-hit damage, you'll actually take whichever of your stat is highest and use that and change the damage profile from physical There's a magical. lot of different active effects that you can bring to your team, such as there's a mushroom that you can place on the ground that heals your whole team, there's an item that knocks people away, and there's even one that actually stasises the whole team, friendly and enemy, that actually can really shift a team fight. So these are really, really powerful effects. The depth effects. of strategy and tactics that you can only find in a three-lane MOBA. Competition is core to our DNA and rest assured that Smite 2 is a competitive game that rewards your time and your skill. But unlike those other MOBAs, Smite 2 is amazing third-person combat. Whether you're coming from MOBAs, shooters, Ability action effects games, are all new, taking full advantage of Niagara. Watch how Anher's pillage is off into sand, how Chalk's rain wets the ground, and how Ymir's wall freezes the nearby environment. These effects item inventory can potentially have an activated effect, triggered by a button press. If you want blink, buy a blinking amulet. And don't worry, if you don't want to think about using any extra buttons in combat, you can still Instead build of a god just having one ability and it's just one piece of code and it's relatively huge, abilities are split into a whole bunch of individual. So in some cases, characters are going to be pretty straightforward. Loki is mostly still a strength-based character. Anher is still a strength-based character. But when we look at his abilities and he has a lot of physical-based attacks, we can do a lot of different strength and int scaling there. We can do that to make it so that you have a more in-hand focus build with strength a more ability-focused build with your intelligence scaling, or we can also augment differently that you didn't want to scale before, because if it scaled off your power, your physical power, it would just get so stronger. So if you want to go a more passive route, or if you want to go a more stat stick route, you want to focus on just making your character as strong as possible, you can still go those item builds. The choice is yours there. And that lets We're not expecting everyone to have to have super high APM and execute a whole bunch of keybinds to be successful in Smite 2, but there are extra tools available for you if you want building the kind of intuitive way that you might expect to. You want strength, you start building strength, and you'll at the end of that, you'll have an item that actually does what it has a whole bunch of active effects that can really round out weaknesses in their team. We want to make sure that that's something that players can easily grab onto. Don't worry. Just build a bow, and every single item with attack speed can be built out of that bow. And you'll have more creative builds than ever before. Gods are no longer just magical or physical. Each god will now have two different sources of power, strength and intelligence. Different abilities within each god's kit will scale differently, and all gods will be able to build all items. Face Punch Ymir with crit is back. Hunters that used to do it all like Kernanos now will need to build Int in order to increase damage on certain abilities, like his polymorph. 
and new hybrid so rather than having the mace tree that builds into four mace items you now have an axe and this axe is the core component for all strength items that exist in the game and so when you hit that button you'll see a whole bunch of builds into you and that's how you determine what stats you want to go so if you aren't sure exactly what you want in smite 2 you can build an axe knowing that you want strength and then maybe you want to get some attack speed so you build a bow to give you some attack speed well now you can see that you have those two items in your inventory you can see what they build into and that'll naturally kind of guide you to the Different item that is all your characters can build both. There's no item restriction, so there's no, you're only building physical power items or only magic power items. You can build all strength and intelligence items. There's a few other minor changes, like lifesteal is now a global stat that affects everything, as well as CDR is now CDR again, but it's not a percentage, it actually modifies your cooldown exponentially as it gets higher. But also, if that's not what you want to go for, you want to give that customization so you can choose that own level of of kind of active to leverage that. So Chalk is a great example of a character who, if you want to get in there, swing your axe and do a whole bunch of damage, largely strength is going to play to your playstyle, and you could.